Welcome back to KPM. I'm Jesse, and with me today is Mark. Hello. Mark's our tech expert. And we've got another in our series of tech tip videos for you. The title of this one is Engine Oil. So the goal of this video is to go through a bunch of questions that we've either read on social media, been sent to us, or even ones that uh, we have had internally and asked the technical team. And my idea is, hey, I get to see these guys every single day. So when I have a question, I get to ask that question. But we don't get to share it with a larger group, a larger audience. And that's what uh, creating this video is going to allow us to do. So any, any question that you hopefully have thought about with regards to engine oil in a, a small engine, we're going to talk about it here today. Yeah. So let's start at the beginning here, right? What is the purpose of oil? Mark, can you help us? The uh, main purpose of oil is obviously to lubricate the engine, lubricate all the moving parts and keep everything running smooth. You don't get metal transfer and the engine blow up. Uh, it does other things like help regulate the temperature, stuff like that in the motor. So one of the guys uh, who is actually one of our longest tech, uh, running tech employees, he actually works out in the field for us. Mm -hmm. He told me one time that with engine oil, the cool thing about uh, any engine is it's eventually going to, no matter how well it's, it's taken care of, it's going to break down, right? Yes. And taking good care of it and maintaining the oil is staving that off. Yes, because as you run it, heat, engine heats up the oil breaks down. Exactly. So it breaks down, it becomes less efficient at what it does, and that's when you have problems. That's why you want to change it. Sure. So next, uh, we just want to talk about, before we dive into the actual details, I just want to mention that no matter what engine you have, and this could be true of the brands that KPM distributes, any other brand out there in the outdoor power equipment space, first step is to always go to your engine owner's manual. That's where you're going to find the best information about your engine. Yep. So we want to just mention that before we really dive in here because we're not trying to make a recommendation that may apply to one engine or not another engine. We don't want to get in trouble with that. We're just trying to get you guys um, a deeper understanding of why this is important. So on social media, one of the most common questions that we see is, I just bought a new mower. I'm going to run down to the local Napa or auto parts store and buy auto uh, oil for my, for my engine, for my first oil change. Can you tell us a little, dif a little bit about the difference between small engine oil and auto oil? The biggest difference between those two applications is the heat. The small engine runs way hotter than your car, uh, truck, whatever you want to call it, automotive. Um, that's the biggest difference. Automotive oil isn't really set up to run that hot where the small engine oil will have the additives, it'll have other things in it to help with the temperature, to run at that temperature constantly, um, which is the biggest difference. So when we talk about additives, um, we're not talking about like putting stable in your oil, you know, like you might do with gas. We're talking about formulated from the factory. Yes, formulated from the factory, uh, different detergents and uh, zincs and molly and all this other stuff that they put in the oil. Um, it's a little bit different between small engines and cars. That's why we tell you to stick with a small engine oil as per your owner's manual, like you mentioned before. One of the really cool things that Mark told me a second ago, actually, is the temperatures that a small engine runs at. What was the number that you said? It can get up to okay. 500 degrees. You know, okay. they're air-cooled. They're not, well, most of them are air-cooled. 99% uh, of all cars are liquid-cooled, so they don't run as hot. Right, yeah, and that's a huge difference. So uh, just remember that we're not, we're not trying to sell you on something you don't need, and really your dealer's not doing that either. The dealer is giving you something that's correct yes. for what your application is. So this is a commonly misunderstood item, and it has to do with the engine warranty versus the overall machine warranty from, from any manufacturer. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so the mower, say if it's a Skag mower, the mower is gonna be covered by Skag. The engine will be covered, covered under the engine manufacturer. So depending if it's a Vanguard, a Kohler, or a Kawasaki, that's who you have to go to for that engine warranty. They will ultimately make the decision on what will be covered under warranty, not so much SCAG. So, so let's, get, let's just touch on that real quick. What Mar Mark just said is hugely important. We're talking about main maintenance and oil, mm -hmm. right? And so... Let's say that you put some crazy oil in there, or you make a decision about what you're gonna to do to adjust uh, the, the engine outside of what they recommend. What, what happens at the engine manufacturer when you go for warranty? If you have a motor that's, that blows up, say you've got 
hundred hours on it and, and you have a catastrophic failure. And what they're going to ask them to do is tear it apart, send them pictures and stuff. And they can tell if you have either there was no oil in it, uh, wrong oil in it, something along those lines. They can tell by pictures, by metal transfer, scoring, all that stuff. They can tell all of that. And, and what they're ultimately going to reject that warranty, right? If they feel necessary um, that you did something wrong or something wrong was in there, they could reject it, um, which could be... Costly mistake. Costly mistake. Very, very costly, especially when you're run, using it to run your business, this yep. machine. So let's let's actually jump a little deeper into that because uh, obviously the warranties can be different from engine manufacturer to engine manufacturer. Yes. Um, but if you follow your engine manual, which is going to tell you have an outline for maintenance, it's going to have oil, it's going to have other things in there for maintenance as yes. well. Yep. If you follow that during the warranty period, then you're obviously going to be protecting yourself. Definitely. Yeah following the procedures when or set up times of when you're supposed to do certain maintenance, uh, saving receipts of what oil you put in it, all that stuff and everything is definitely helpful if you have to fight for a warranty to be covered or something like that. Sure, sure. Okay, so obviously uh, outdoor power equipment engines have really grown in terms of the breadth and offerings that are, that are being offered. When I first started, there was no such thing as EFI, yeah. right? There was DFI, but there was no EFI. So um, the question is, do I need a different kind of oil for certain situations? The first situation is I have an EFI engine versus a carbureted engine. Is there any kind of difference in oil? Uh, there's no difference in the oil. Um, the only advantage you're going to get is you're going to get less contamination into the oil on an EFI system. Um, some carbureted systems, trailer in the unit, stuff like that, you can get gas that gets into the oil a little bit more than on an EFI unit. So, so you might, depending on what the engine manufacturer recommends, they might be the exact same oil in both machines, yep. but you're gonna get, you could potentially get a better life out of the EFI because you're not getting that contamination? You're probably gonna get better, less contamination, I will say. Um, your engine oil changes are about the same and everything like that. Oh, but okay. It's just a little bit cleaner with the EFI. So the next one is air-cooled versus liquid-cooled engines. Obviously, there's different types out there. What, uh, is there any type of difference in terms of the oil? Um, with the engine manufacturers, there's no, they don't recommend a different oil for air-cooled versus liquid-cooled. Okay. Um, your liquid-cooled is obviously going to run a little bit cooler. Um, but the oil is the same that they recommend. And generally up front, that liquid cooled engine might be a little bit more expensive, but the thinking is, is that it's gonna, it could potentially last longer. It could, yes, because you're not gonna be breaking down the oil as fast due to the heat, due to the heat and stuff like that. So. Yeah. So, that's, so basically the first two is because these two engines are different, but there's no difference in the type of oil that we generally would, would be yeah. using. Yep, there's no difference in the oil that you'd be putting in it. So here's another one. This is a really good one, right? So I didn't know this. I thought I assumed it was it was very often left field. But the question is, diesel oil. Obviously, we 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 have some diesel engines in the lineup. What is there a difference in what you would use in a diesel engine? Yes, the diesel oil will be different. Uh, okay. Again, back to additives, weights, stuff like that is different for the diesel motor than the gas powered engines. Okay, and that's again back to the owner's manual to yep. recommend this. Back to the owner's manual and go with by what they recommend. There's a couple of different um, brands of diesel engines out there in the outdoor power equipment industry as a whole. Mm -hmm. And so that's why we can't tell you use this, use that. Just, you know, again, you know, look up your owner's manual. So tell us a little bit about that. So we say owner's manual, people think like, oh, I don't know where I put it when I got my machine. Mm -hmm. But is that where I have to go? No, you can find them online. Uh, go to the engine manufacturer's website. Uh, it goes by the model of the motor and stuff. And you can download the owner's manual right there from their websites. So. so if you're not sure, you know, if you got your 200 hour service coming up and you've misplaced your, your manual or maybe you, you never even got one, who knows, just go to the engine owner, uh, the engine manufacturer's website mm -hmm. in order to find it. Don't go to um, the, the mower manufacturer, go to the engine manufacturer. Yep. Or even your dealer can help you find it sure. and stuff too. That, your dealer's where you're going to be buying that oil anyway. Um, your automa uh, automotive stores and stuff like that are not going to have small engine oil by and large. So. Some of them do, but most of it's automotive. Yeah, be better to bring it to the dealer who's going to be doing that warranty and support work for you on the back end anyway. Exactly. So another topic that we can think about when it comes to engine oil is weight of the oil. Yes. So what can you tell us about what does weight have to do with anything? Weight is basically the viscosity of the oil, how thin it is compared to how thick it is. Um, generally, you're going to be in one range all season unless you start 
spring cleanups real early, very cold in the morning, you might want to run a different weight until it gets hot out till summer and then switch to a different weight oil that's better for the heat. Um, generally, you're going to be right in one range of oil though. Um, again, in your manufacturer, what they recommend, uh, they have charts for it and everything for the temperatures the engine's running at. Reason you don't want to run something that's too thick when it's cold is it takes a lot longer to lubricate the engine and you don't want to be having metal on metal for any time. Yeah. Any time longer than you need to. So. That makes sense. Yeah. And think about it too. I mean, we, we often think about mowers cause that's most of what we do, but we also have fall renovation products. We have truck loaders, we have things like that, uh, wind storms. And when you get into those products, they're used later into the fall yep. and earlier in the spring, a lot colder. Yep. So you could, you know, depending on usage on a mo on, on any piece of machinery, if you start it early and you get enough usage where you might need an oil change by say June, yep. you can go, be, uh, better for cold weather weight and then go better for hot weather weather weight yeah, when you sure. change it. Yeah, you definitely could. Wouldn't hurt anything. Probably make it a little bit better as far as startup and everything too. And potentially, potentially extend the, the, the life of the engine. Yes. Yeah. So on the machines that we sell, there's actually two two types of systems that require oil, right? Uh, except for like belt drive, walk behinds, and some of the smaller things. Um, you're gonna deal with a hydro system mm -hmm. and then the engine oil, which is what we've been talking about all video. Yep. So can you tell me or us, you know, the group a little bit of a difference between what you're gonna use in hydraulic versus engine? Uh, the biggest difference as far as that goes is gonna be the additives in the oil, weight and additives in the oil. Um, they're meant for different things. You're still gonna get, the hydro is still gonna get really hot, but it's under way more pressure than like an engine oil would be. Um, you're talking upwards to sometimes you get spikes of 2000 PSI in the hydro system, okay. uh, stuff like that. So it's got additives to help with that. Um, more shearing additives for the gear mo or wheel motors and stuff like that than like engine oils. Sure. Um, so you're not gonna wanna mix the two or swap one for the other. That was gonna be my next question. Can I use my engine oil in my hydro system? Oh, I would definitely not recommend that. You can, <laughs> but there's no guarantee that you're gonna get any type of warranty or support service if you make a decision like that outside of what, what the manufacturers are recommending. So yep. at, least for, at least for the time period that it's under warranty, you wanna stick with. Yep, and most of the manufacturers now have their own branded hydro oil for the hydro systems and stuff like that. And it's best to stick with those. Best to stick with the OEM and that's where, what you're gonna get at your local dealer. Yep. So this is kind of a thorny topic and it's one that we kind of saved for last for that purpose. But um, we ask it asked a lot of times, can I use aftermarket oil in my engine? In theory, yes, you can. Um, but we go back to the whole engine manufacturer recommended oils, warranty, uh, stuff like that. So what we say is best is to stick with what the manufacturer recommends. Uh, they all have their own oils. We suggest running those while you're in warranty. At the very least, while, very you're in, least. while you're in the warranty. Save yourself the Any trouble down the road that you might have. So that, that's pretty much all of the, the topics that we wanted to cover for you today. Obviously, if there are any types of new questions that come up from this, which I imagine there probably will be, please let us know. Yep. We'll shoot an addendum, a, a follow-up video, something like that, and we'll get those questions answered for you with the experts as well. Uh, Mark, is there anything else that you wanna, wanna share with the group? Or uh, As always, go by what they recommend in your owner's manual. So, uh, what the manufacturer recommends. I was thinking what we'll do is we can post, um, you know, links to each manufacturer site. They're pretty easy to find if you yep. Google them, but uh, that's where you're going to want to go yep. to get to get your information. We want to make that easy for you. And uh, as always, send us a, a question or a comment and we'll uh, we'll do our best to help. Okay. Thanks for watching.